at the car that I'm driving and you notice the handsome sharp face, you might think this is the Mercedes-Benz CLS. But if you move your perspective to the side of the car, you might notice that the length is not that long, which might make you believe this is the CLA. But then you realize it doesn't have a coupe roof line. So this isn't the CLA, but this is the new entry-level offering from Mercedes-Benz. This is the most economical offering that you can have from Mercedes-Benz in India at the moment. Say hello to the new Mercedes-Benz A-Class sedan or limousine in German speak. It is based on the fourth generation of the A-Class hatchback that debuted internationally in 2018, replaces the CLA in the Indian market and goes up against the likes of the BMW 2 Series. Mercedes-Benz points out that the A-Class limo is the tallest, longest and the roomiest car in its segment. There's no doubt that the CLA was a gorgeous looking car, especially those moth wing tail lights. They look beautiful, that coupe form, that looked beautiful too. And while there is a new CLA out in the market internationally, Mercedes-Benz is not sure if that's going to make much of a sense in the Indian scheme of things. You see, the CLA was received pretty well in the beginning, so was the A-Class hatchback, but slowly those sales dwindled down. Of course, there are two reasons for it. One is that people wanted to move to crossovers, SUVs, and then there was the other chunk of people who wanted a classic 3-box sedan. And that classic 3-box sedan is what this car is. You look at the proportions and it looks just the way you expect a luxury sedan from Mercedes-Benz to look like. The proportions are just right, all right in the right places. And I think with the new sharper design theme at Mercedes-Benz, this one actually looks quite good. The boot space for the India spec model is down from 420 litres to 405 litres. But the spare wheel will go under the floor and not over it as seen in the CBO model shown here. The pandemic has delayed the arrival of the A Limo into India but the CLS-derived styling makes it a looker. The sharp headlight design also incorporates one of the most powerful lighting solutions in this price bracket. And while we couldn't shoot it for you, it illuminated the tricky roads in Goa extremely well during some of our night drives. One design feature that I really like is that of the wheels. The design isn't outstanding. It's a very sober, elegant design. But if you look closely at the design of the wheel, you will see that it's also got a nice aerodynamic profile. There are no cuts and creases just for the sake of it. It's actually quite functional too. And because it is 17 inches in size, it also allows for slightly higher profile tyres, which in our scheme of things works quite well. In fact, the headline for the A-Class Limo is its 0.22 coefficient of drag, which is claimed to be the best for any production car so far. But the India spec model rides slightly higher for better ground clearance and bad road capabilities, and so the figure could be slightly different. But there's no denying that the A-Limo looks premium and sporty and will appeal to first-timers as well as the existing customers in the luxury space. Unfortunately, the red colour that I showed you on a scale model on my Instagram isn't available in India and these Portia colours are exclusive to the A35 AMG. I'm really loving the kind of dashboard design and layout that they've managed with this car. Of course, there are some elements like these AC vents that we've seen on cars like the CLS. We've seen this twin screen setup. Uh, these are two 10.25 inch screens. It just looks nice and crisp and it just lifts the mood of the cabin. It doesn't feel like an entry-level product at all and that is what I like about it. Uh, even the way they have layered the dashboard, it looks so beautiful. Now they've gone with uh, open pore walnut wood uh, trimming and you have this perforated uh, article leather on it. Uh, the only thing it leaves me wanting for or wishing for is darker upholstery because this car's it's hardly done about 250 kilometers and uh, well that upholstery is already getting soiled. Now, some of you would have said, ah, it looks a bit too elegant, it looks a bit too matured with all the wood and leather finish that they've gone in uh, for. They could have given something a little bit more sportier, uh, which I agree. But at the same time, I know that there's the A35 AMG coming in very soon, which will have uh, all those sporty options. And I'm hoping that there will be a derivative, an AMG line that might be introduced with uh, this particular car. And when I say AMG line, I'm talking about trimmings, not AMG engines. I hope that there's an AMG trim that is also introduced with this car at a later stage, which will give you more sporty looking appointments in the cabin.
Now there isn't much in the cabin that I can nitpick on. However, just to go nitpicking, uh, if I do not use the sync function on the two zone climate control at the front, and if I were to change the temperature, I can't see what's happening. What's the temperature I'm selecting? Because the readout is in the lower part, uh, the lower right part of the screen, and it's always hiding behind the steering wheel. No matter uh, what the position of the steering wheel is, I can't see the readout. And that's because the screen size is a bit smaller. That's the only thing that I can go nitpick. The other big feature for the infotainment, of course, is the MBUX. Now, despite this being an entry-level offering from Mercedes-Benz, the MBUX is right up there with the other offerings. Like, for example, we recently drove the GLC, which had the uh, Alexa or uh, Google remote capability where this system would feed certain data to your Alexa or Google Home device uh, and you could retrieve data like vehicle location, fuel status, etc. And all those features are a part of this as well. So in terms of the tech, connected tech, it's all there. So it's not like the past where the entry level offerings from the luxury brands felt or made, made you feel short changed because they didn't give you the kind of features that you would expect at that price point. Here, however, there's not much that this cabin or this car leaves you wanting for. In the hot and humid weather of Goa right now, I'm really missing a ventilation function on these seats. But otherwise, the seats are nice and supportive. Both the front seats also get a memory function, which is a good thing. Because at the end of the day, this car is primarily aimed at people who are going to drive the car themselves, not people who are going to be driven around. At the same time, that is something that was a big concern with the CLA or the A-Class because people were, weren't quite happy with the kind of space that these cars offered at the back. However, with the A-Class sedan, that concern has been fixed. Even with the front passenger seat aligned in line with the driver's seat that was set for a six-footer, the rear bench offers excellent knee room and foot space. The headroom is generous even for a six-footer and the large window aperture and the panoramic roof complement the airy feel of this cabin. With a tall bulge in the floor, the rear seat is good for two adults and a small kid only. There are AC vents at the rear and there are a total of five USB-C ports and a wireless charger up front, meaning that there are charging solutions for all passengers. Motivation for the A200 comes by way of a 1.3-litre four-cylinder turbo petrol. And I know a lot of you are going to cringe at the idea of having a 1.3 in a luxury brand. But then let me urge you to think beyond that, think otherwise. Because in today's times where technology is headed, downsized engines are actually able to match the performance of larger engines. In fact, you would have to read the spec sheet or someone would have to tell you that this is a 1.3 for you to know it's a 1.3. The way it performs, the performance or the output or uh, its overall behavior on the road, on the highway, in the city, all of that is on par with what two-liter engines managed not so long ago. In fact, our V-Box numbers show that the A200 is fairly quick off the mark, though about a second slower than the CLA200 petrol that we've tested in the past. But for day-to-day -day use, the engine is nicely tuned for a smooth performance in the city and easy cruising capabilities on the highway. You might raise your eyebrows again if I tell you that we've got a foretaste of this engine the Renault Duster 1.3 Turbo. Yep, same engine. It impressed us back then and it continues to impress even in this application. This engine was co-developed with Renault and that is where the similarities end. In the A-Class Limo, it runs a different state of tune and is mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. This engine is smooth and refined, fit to wear the three-pointed star. At the same time, it's a bit noisy beyond 2000 RPM and good noise. It's a petrol after all. It redlines at about 6,200 RPM and on your way there, you will also hear a transmission whine beyond the 4,000 RPM mark. But if you are willing to rev that high, you will actually make rapid progress. And usually, most scenarios, you will really not need to rev that high. Between two to 4,000 RPM, there is enough grunt from this turbocharged motor for city commutes, for highway cruises, for pulling overtakes both at city and highway speeds. So performance is largely good and you will seldom need to go or rev that high. Unlike older DCTs, the gearbox isn't jerky at city speeds and it is surprisingly quick to respond to varying throttle inputs compared to the older transmission that we had sampled with the CLA. 
You can fine tune those responses further by choosing between the eco, comfort or sport modes or by taking manual control using the paddle shifters. Now, despite everything that I've told you so far, I'm very sure there are going to be quite a few souls out there who are still going to be concerned about the size of this engine in this particular car. There are going to be a lot many people out there who are concerned about the reliability of uh, DCT transmissions in our conditions, in our traffic and weather conditions, let's put it that way. So to negate that concern, Mercedes-Benz is offering a massive 8-year warranty on the engine and the gearbox. That is a big deal. Furthermore, if you uh, upgrade to another Mercedes-Benz like most owners do or if you end up selling the A-Class and move to some other brand, no matter what, the warranty gets transferred to the next owner which ensures further peace of mind for anyone who is shopping in the luxury pre-owned space. The same warranty is also applicable on the diesel. Speaking of which, the A200D uses a 2-litre 4-cylinder oil burner that has a humble 150 PS of power but a healthy 320 newton meters of torque and Bert also had a go at it. The car I'm driving is the A200D. This is the four-cylinder inline diesel, turbocharged diesel engine that powers the A-Class. Now it makes about 150 horsepower with 320 newton meters of torque. But the interesting bit is that Mercedes-Benz India claims that this car is about 0.1 second quicker than its petrol counterpart. And not just quicker, even the fuel efficiency. Mercedes claims this car will give you 21.35 kilometers per liter, which is an incredible fuel efficiency figure for a car of this order. So you've got decent range, you've got great performance, makes it you know, a very compelling buy. There is a fair amount of engine noise that comes into this cabin. Sound deadening isn't the best, but it is refined. I'm driving it on sport mode, and if I had to just slip it into comfort, it becomes a lot smoother. It's a lot more refined. That engine rumble, the engine whine, is no longer audible inside this cabin. So yes, if you weren't in the NCR region, you're probably better off buying the diesel because you can just have as much fun, if not more, than what you'd get uh, from the petrol and also be frugal at the same time. It's incredibly quiet. The diesel has impressive figures of course, but choose that variant only if you're going to really go long distances with the car. If most of your time with this car is going to be restricted to city commutes and occasional highway runs, I think the petrol will do just fine. Now that said, both the engines, they feed power and talk to the front wheels. And while some purists may cringe at that again, saying, no, we want a rear wheel drive, Honestly, for most city commutes, highway cruises, you're not going to notice a big difference between the dynamics of this car versus a rear-wheel driven car like the C-Class. It's only when you really start pushing the car hard around bends. In fact, I'm driving around bends normally right now and there's no hint of understeer or body roll. Everything is very well controlled. You will, like I said, hardly notice any difference in dynamics. It's only when you start pushing the car really hard around bends like these or switchbacks like these, that is when there will be that little hint of understeer, but then there are the electronics that kick in, that make sure that the car maintains its line. It will cut power, of course, but it will make sure nothing really gets unnerving. The tyres on the India Spec car feature sidewalls that are taller and tougher to withstand potholes and poor road conditions. Thanks to the 17-inch rims, the ride quality is generally quite good. Uh, it's not as plush as something like the C-Class, it's a bit firmer than uh, what the C-Class uh, has to offer. So if you want that kind of a plush ride, you might want to upgrade to the C-Class instead. Uh, but this car has a more youthful intent and that is why it's a bit on the firmer side that also gives it nice and taut handling dynamics through the corners. But when I say firm, it's not as firm as something like a BMW 2 Series. It's somewhere in between a 2 Series and a C-Class. I can't really find any room for complaint here. It's, it's absorbing most of the stuff quite well. It's only at highway speeds that it feels a bit floaty and starts tracking around a little bit, but it's not something that's unnerving. There's a whole lot of safety kit to go with it. So overall, I am quite happy with the kind of ride quality that they've managed for the Indian road conditions. 
but compared to the older A-Class hatch or the CLA, this sedan feels a bit larger and wider to drive, which may or may not be a good thing depending on how you like your cars, large or compact. In the narrow lanes of Goa, however, the A-Class sedan was fairly easy to drive. All round visibility is actually quite good, cornering visibility is quite nice, the A-pillar isn't too thick and the wing mirrors aren't intrusive in your field of vision either. But you have to get a good judgement of the longish nose of this car though, especially in tight parking spaces. That said, I was really wishing that this car comes with a 360 degree camera as well. One, it would have been added safety and two, it would have also uh, enabled the feature of this new MBUX system which is the augmented reality for the satellite navigation. It was a big talking point for this new generation MBUX when it debuted at the CES and that is something I would have loved to see in the Indian conditions as well, especially considering how confusing our intersections are, how confusing our roads can get and that augmented reality would have just been the icing on the cake. Speaking of safety, the A-Class complements its otherwise progressive brakes with emergency braking assist as well as an automated braking function at city speeds. And should you still unfortunately hit a pedestrian, it will instantaneously pop out the hood to soften the impact. So to sum it up, the A-Class sedan has a kit that surpasses the expectations of this segment set by the competition as well as its own predecessors. In a nutshell, it's a car that first-timers to the brand can brag about beyond the badge on the grille. It can also ferry four idols in a comfortable and dignified way. And the longer warranty packages ensure a higher residual value for the car, which means upgrading from here becomes an easy affair. And for existing customers of the luxury space, the new age design, cabin and tech ensures that the A-Class sedan fits well in their garage. What are your thoughts though? Does the A-Class limousine fill the voids left by the erstwhile hatch and the CLA? And would this be the car that you would buy if you are shopping in the compact luxury space? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to like and share this video. And subscribe to the Overdrive channel and hit that bell icon so that you stay on top of all our updates. Thank you so much for watching.